Hey Canucks fans, welcome to Clay's Canucks Commentary for Wednesday, February the 6th. I'm Clay Emo, I'm at Canuck Clay on Twitter, I'm at Clayton Emo on Instagram, I'm the founder of the GLCPC, the Good Looking Canucks Positivity Club, and this is my Canucks take, all in one take. Last night the Vancouver Canucks lost a hard-fought game to the defending Stanley Cup champions, the Washington Capitals. The Canucks lost 3-2, to two, bringing their road trip record to 1-2-0. and oh. They started off by beating Colorado, then losing on back-to-back nights to Philadelphia and Washington. And uh, almost a similar feel to the Philadelphia game last night in that the, the Canucks played well, had a very slow start. Actually, their start yesterday was slower than the one you know, on Tuesday night in Philly, uh, excuse me, Monday night in Philly. And Washington pummeled them with, uh, like, I think 18 shots in the first period. I think it was 18 to 5 was the final, you know, was the final shot tally. Yet, uh, Markstrom only led in one goal. He played very, very well. And he played well overall. You know, the third goal, unfortunately, the game winning goal, kind of that weird one that rolled on top of the net and off of his back. The question or whether or not uh, Washington Capitals player actually tipped it or or, or, or or swung and missed. Whatever it is, it's still counted, and the Patterson makes it a little bit closer near the end uh, with a with a goal with seven or eight seconds left. So really, three one game until that final that final uh, goal with with under ten seconds left. But it's nice to see Patterson get on the board, of course. But yeah, the Canucks played well, and you can't fault their effort, especially given the fact that they're without their number one D man uh, in Alex Edler, and you know one of their. Uh, one of their most consistent forwards, uh, wingers, in Sven Berchi. Sven Berchi, we're still awaiting word on on what is the illness that is ailing him, um, whether it's physical, mental, whatever it may be. So we'll wait to hear from that. We know Thatcher Demko um, is getting an MRI done or got one done on his knee. So that's why Michael DiPietro was up and on the bench. Don't look to see him get any uh, game action in the next couple of weeks, but we'll see. You never know. And then, of course, the biggest loss right now is Ad- Alex Edler. Thankfully... Um, no word of a fractured face or broken bones, rather stitches and a concussion. So stitches, obviously that will heal. Concussion, you never know. They're saying at least a week that could balloon up to two, three, four weeks. Or it could be, he could be back as soon as after one or one and a half weeks. We'll see. But thankfully the news, at least on that front, in that, uh, of course the concussion is serious. I've suffered one and, and I've talked about that before. I, I know how bad it is. We've seen Pedersen have concussions already, but at least it wasn't concussion plus you know, a uh, facial fracture, or whatever. It's quite, quite remarkable given the, the force that he, he hit the ice, um, he hit the ice with, with his face, unfortunately. So I'd say I, you know, full credit to the Canucks for putting in a really good, really valiant effort last night, um, despite not having Edler and Berchi in the lineup. And, you know, you feel for guys like Bo Horvat who wants, is trying so hard to, to break a slump. You know, he had a nice move to set up the penalty that led to a penalty shot for him. And unfortunately, he couldn't uh, beat Braden Holtby on that penalty shot. And he looked very frustrated in doing so. So I guess when you, when you, you can't fault the Canucks effort, but you do recognize how it is indeed a game of inches and how the margin of error is so small. We know that uh, two defensemen, Troy Stetcher and Ben Hutton, both hit posts or crossbars last night. We saw Horvat just, you know, miss um, a couple times, especially on that penalty shot. So there's so the game-winning goal, the one that rolled across the top of the net and bounced off Markstrom back. All these show that we know that hockey is a game of inches, and sometimes it's just one mistake at an inopportune time that's going to make the difference between a win and a loss. And when I talk about the small margin of error and how how close things can feel and how how you know tightly you might grip the sticks you can kind of analogize that to the standings right now and we've talked about it but now add chicago to the mix there are eight teams that you could say realistically could get the final wild card spot right it looks like the top three in the pacific are locked in in calgary san jose and vegas and you could say the top three at least the top two in the central are locked in winnipeg and nashville and then maybe let's say dallas is starting to separate a little bit so dallas over minnesota that means there's eight teams vancouver minnesota st louis colorado anaheim arizona edmonton and i missed one let's try that again vancouver anaheim edmonton arizona st louis Colorado, Minnesota, and Chicago. Those eight teams. I'd say the only team that I wouldn't... I'd say that doesn't really have a chance at all is LA. But you never know. All you gotta do is put together three or four straight wins and then they're in the mix as well. So that's maybe about the margin of error. I, I believe between 51 and 58 points now or 57 points. So six or seven points separate eight teams. And as excited as I was that Vancouver was in a playoff spot when this week started, now they're only a point ahead of St. Louis. And St. Louis has three games in hand. That's how quickly things can change. And what I'm worried about, yes, I'm the founder of the GLCPC. Yes, I'm glass half full. Yes, I'm very optimistic. Yes, I'm very positive. Yes, I look at the bright side. But 
Um, my fear is with Edler out and maybe with no viable backup goaltender right now, I think the Canucks are going to play really hard. But I, it wouldn't surprise me if they ended up losing a lot of these games. And it's disheartening, yes, because you, they're trying their butts off and they're, they're working hard and they're, they're doing everything the coach says. But they simply might not be deep nor talented enough to not only get in the playoffs, but then really do anything once they get in the playoffs. Now, things could change. Edler could come back. Uh, Markstrom could stand on his head. Um, whatever, maybe Pedersen or Besser or Horvat get hot again. Whatever it may be, or maybe secondary scoring. But I just get the sense of watching the Colorado game, then watching Philly, and then watch, especially watching the two losses to Philly and Washington. I get it's back-to-back games. I guess it's against tough competition, especially Washington. But I have this sense, I don't like it, but I have the sense that the Canucks are going to try really hard, get, put up valiant efforts, but in the end come up a tiny bit short, not only in the games, but in the playoff run. I would love to be prove, proven wrong. You know, I, I want to see them make the Canucks as much as the next guy, um, especially as a season ticket holder and someone who gets excited about playoff hockey. But I think we'd agree that the Canucks will have to go on some sort of run. Someone's going to have to go on a run. All it takes is for one of these teams to go on an extended run. And they, that might be enough to, to lock up the, the last playoff spot in the Western Conference. Canucks fans, let me know what you think. Do you agree with my assessment that this is going to be a tough stretch? Do you agree that this is a make-or-break time? And especially look at that Chicago game. If Chicago wins, then they come within one point of the Canucks. And with the same number of games uh, played. But that just shows how tight it was uh, a few weeks ago, I, uh, two weeks ago. Last week, I wasn't even mentioning Chicago in my, in my, in my blogs and my vlogs. But now they could pull within one point of the Canucks um, when they face each other tomorrow night in Chicago. So lots to talk about. Canucks fans, leave a comment below. Tell me what you think of the race. Tell me you think the Canucks still have a chance. Are you discouraged with the Edler injury? Or do you think there's a chance for other guys to step up? Um, and do you think they have the, the depth to step up? Love to hear about that. Love to hear what you think about the last night's game against Washington, what you're going to th- predicting about next tomorrow's game against Chicago, whatever it may be. I'd love to read, react, and apply as always. Subscribe if you like to. Like this video if you like to. Enjoy the day. Beautiful day in Vancouver. Looking forward to the Canucks. Finish you off the road trip, hopefully with a win, and creating a tiny bit of separation and keeping their heads above water in the playoff race in the Western Conference. Have a great day. God bless, and go Canucks go.